I met a gypsy. When did it become a thing for you where you're like, okay, I'm going to be a professional dirt bike racer and I'm going to make money and that's going to be my life? Like, when was that flip in your, uh, in your mind? <clears throat> um, it was, I want to say it was like really late, honestly. Like, I don't know, obviously, I, I got on Huskies when I was pretty much right in the super minis. Mm. So obviously I had the confidence of like, yeah, like I'm on a factory team. Like they believe in me, you know, mm. but I didn't really start to believe in anything until I was on 125s because when I was on 125s, that's when I started to beat a lot of the kids that were on other factory bikes and that were getting a lot more hype than I was at the time. So like, that's when I started to believe it and was like, I went to Loretta's and schoolboy and won both titles and I was like oh well I'm pretty good you know because I I didn't I didn't go into Loretta's thinking I was gonna win I was just like all right let's have fun you know yeah and uh yeah I got both those titles and then that's when I kind of started to believe it and then it just kind of started like the ball started rolling more and more and more as the years went gone or gone by just off of good races good placings like I felt like I was always in that top one through three bunch and and so when you moved to the ferries and you were you living there pretty much full time or were you like living at home and then you'd go like just go there to train (laughs) um it's funny story actually because uh uh so hewitt actually set this all up bobby bobby yeah that's who um hit yeah bobby hewitt bobby hewitt and uh scuba were the ones who were really uh, pushing for me to go to uh, uh, ferries. Um, so they pushed for that, and uh, it's funny enough because like it's when the ferries were like, "All right, yeah, we'll do it." Like, I was, I was like, "No, I'm I'm staying with Brandon." Like loser, the guy's talking yeah, about who yeah, took me over. Yeah. I was like, "No, I'm staying with him." Like that that that's my family. You know what I mean? Like that that was my security in a way because it was just like that's who I did everything with after yeah. my dad went away. So I was like, uh, no, that's who I'm staying with. And he had a place that was like, uh, an hour away from where we rode in Dade city. So I was like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to stay with them. And, uh, Evie actually forced me to live in their house so they could get to know me and we could start to build a bond. But I was like super hesitant and shy and I never talked to, and like, it was a really rough stay, but like, I'm glad that we had to go through that because like dude I was I was like pretty rebellious from that I was like I remember Brandon told me he was like no Evie Evie said that uh you're gonna you're gonna stay at their house and I was like dude are you effing kidding me like no I'm not staying over there no I'm not and then I was forced to and I just (sighs) had to learn to be honestly something I'm not in a way you know what I mean like how do you mean they, they would always have people come over and I would have to introduce myself and talk is like I was I, I don't know if it was just off what I went through or what but I was on in a way antisocial like I didn't want to talk to yeah. you I didn't want to be around you I didn't trust you I had three or four people I trusted and I don't know this this goes back to like the mad at the world thing that you're talking about earlier but like in a way I was, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, these people don't know me. They don't know what I've been through. I don't care to know what they've been through. I don't care to be around them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's just how I was. I don't know if that was just my safety net or what, but that's how I was. And like, they made me talk and be social and open up and, uh, just change like my whole attitude around and like kind of just guiding me in terms of like, we know you're not meaning to come off this way but you're coming off this way you know mm. what I mean and so it was nice to have that type of family to ease me into something else because obviously yeah like the fairies went through what they went through but they have a big house and everything's good and they have everything figured out in life and they they're on top of absolutely everything yeah and that's kind of the opposite of what I've came from you yeah. know what I mean yeah. so it was a big learning curve and it took a lot of time and I, w- I would say it was only until like my second year being there where it was like I started finally opening up to him yeah but like I give like I praise them for everything because 
they could have been like, all right, yeah, this kid's weird after year one yeah, and me yeah. still not talking, yeah. you know what I mean? And be like, all right, yeah, we're done with him. But like they gave me the benefit of the doubt and kept on having me around and like it shaped me into who I am now. And and I'm still, I'm not the best at it. Like I'll, I'll still have my times where like I'll side eye somebody yeah, and, yeah. and just like go about my day, you know what I mean? But like I, I'm, I'm a lot better. Like I'll, I'll talk. I'll shake your hand. I could absolutely hate you, but I, I still come up to you and, and like do normal human decency stuff. Yeah, yeah. And like, that's all the kind of stuff that I learned while being at the ferries. Man, it, it sort of sounds, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sort of sounds like there's almost a little <clears throat> bit of like survivor guilt in a way too. Like, have you heard of that whole concept of, mm. you know, like where mm-hmm. you kind of, I'm assuming that, you know, you're in this super nice house with this family that's mm-hmm. like the you know white picket fence but with a motocross track in the backyard kind of family and then you're <laughs> from a completely different world and like your mom's still in that world your grandma's still in that world your two brothers mm-hmm. are still in that world so i'm sure there was probably some internal conflict going on even about like enjoying mm-hmm. where you were living because it's like well i you know i don't yeah. even want to enjoy this because of what everyone else is kind of going through you know i'm sure that kind of fucked with your head a yeah. little bit no exactly yeah exactly like um <clears throat> yeah i was like uh from that point when i moved into the fairy's house like i was obviously like stable like everything was gonna be good you know yeah but um yeah, obviously, yeah, my mom is still living whatever with trying to save money by not using the AC in the summer and, like, like keeping all the lights off just so, like, like electricity bill isn't high and, and all that kind of stuff. And, like, I knew all that stuff while I was there. So I, I do think that a lot of it probably came from that. But I don't know. I was so level-headed and, and trying to get to where I was going just so eventually I could fix that yeah that like I tried to be more in the moment than like not but like obviously that's a super hard th- like that's a hard thought process for a kid you know what I mean yeah. going into a household that he doesn't know anybody in and then like yeah like I do know like I got two little brothers back home my grandma and my mom still back there and like it is hard but I felt like I felt like I knew that like it wasn't going to get better unless I put in the work yeah, and yeah. actually focused and did exactly what the fairies told me to do and stuff like that. And I got super uh, like tunnel vision in a way to just get to where I'm going to and then I'll fix this when I can. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.